Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson in this Tosca automation playlist. Today, I'm going to tell you how you can do multilingual testing using Tosca. Now, what does it mean? So if your application or your website has got multiple languages, so this particular website uh, is from Nikon and it is a Canadian website, but it has got two languages. As you can see, this is the English language and then there is also an option for French, right? So if I click on the French link, then uh, it converts everything on this page to the French language. Now, this is a very common scenario which you come across web applications when uh, there are multiple languages supported by that web application, then uh, you need to test um, with every language. Now, how you can do this easily with Tosca. So let's get started. I'm going back to English. Now, what I have done in Tosca is I have already added a module for this page. And what uh, we want to do is just want to click on this camera's link, okay? So I have added the module for the English page you can see here, okay? And then uh, I have identified this particular link, which is cameras, and then we are going to click on it. So this is all fine. But what if uh, then we need to test it in the French language, right? So if we change this page to French, then uh, this particular text is going to change. Now, it will work if there is uh, unique properties like ID, uh, which is unique even if the language changes, then you can still work with that particular ID. But uh, this particular link, it has not got any particular ID. As you can see in the properties, uh, it is identified by the inner text and the tag. These are the two properties with which it is using. So if we change the uh, language to French, then the inner text is going to change. And then our test case is going to fail, right? Now, one way is obviously uh, you can create multiple modules for multiple languages, but that's not an efficient way of doing it, right? So let's see how we can resolve this particular problem. So first of all, uh, let's go ahead and create a test case under this multilingual test case folder, okay? So I'm going to say click cameras. So that's what our test case is. And then I'm going to drag this module uh, right here, okay? And then uh, we are going to click on this, right? So this is all fine. Um, if I execute this and it's going to click on the camera's link. But since I already changed the language to French, now this will not work. So let's see, um, first let it fail and then um, we'll see how we can fix this particular problem, right? Okay, so there are two problems right now. First of all, Tosca is not able to find that particular link. But before that, um, before going to the link, the title of the page has also changed. So currently, uh, the title which Tosca is trying to find was in English, but right now, the title has changed to French, right? And how you can see that, uh, you can even go to inspect uh, in Chrome, and then you can search for title, okay? So this is the title which uh, is currently there for this particular page. So you need to fix two things. One is the title and one is the link itself, okay? So let's see um, how we can do this. So this can be resolved by using regular expression in your module attributes, okay? So the two things which we need to change is uh, the title of this particular module, okay? So here you can see it is in English. So what we can do is uh, you we can use regular expression where we can use the or condition, okay? So we can put two titles, okay? So whichever title is present uh, on the page, it will use that and it will identify the element. And the same we can do for the link control as well, okay? So we can put uh, two different text, uh, which can be in different languages. Now this uh, you can replicate for multiple languages, not only two, but any number of languages which you want to support. Right. So for every control, uh, you need to use the regular expression uh, where you need to verify that particular control in multiple languages. So uh, let's do this. Okay. Uh, 
I am going to first of all cut this, and this will basically start with an expression called regex. Okay, because we are going to write a regular expression, so you need to write a regex, uh, which is the expression starting with curly brace, and then we'll put a square bracket, and then inside this we are going to write our uh, multiple text in different languages. Okay, so we are going to start off uh, with the English language. And I'm going to reduce uh, this text, okay? I'm going to cut it, and then I'm going to put a star, which means uh, any character after this text will be recognized, okay? No matter what it is. But the cameras from Nikon uh, will remain constant, okay? Then uh, we need to put the or sign, which is this particular uh, state, state bar. And after this, you can put the text which you want to identify in French, okay? And that uh, I've already shown you. So using this title, we can find out this. So I'm going to use the initial part of the text, which is this, okay? And then come back here, and then we are going to put it here. Again, we are going to use the star so that the remaining text can be uh, used as regular expression. Then we are going to uh, do double quotes and then close the square bracket and then close the uh, curly braces, okay? So that will identify the title. Now coming to the camera's link, right? So we need to uh, change the inner text. We need to use regular expression here. So the first uh, text is in English, and then we need to put uh, or condition and then put it in French, okay? So the same case like we did for title. Um, again, I will take it out and I will start with regex. Okay, and then square brackets, double quotes, then put it across, then the or condition. And then uh, we need to write this particular inner text in French. Okay, so this is the inner text, as you can see. So I'm going to write this uh, particular text, which is displayed here. So it will be April, and then photo, okay. And then I will also use uh, the star so that any, if that particular text changes, then also it should work, okay? So let me just verify. So it's April's uh, and then photo. Okay, and then uh, we'll uh, put double quotes uh, and the square bracket and, and the curly brace. Okay, so this is uh, the inner text using which this control would be identified both for English as well as French language. Now, uh, coming back to our test case, uh, so now uh, it can be executed. So let's see whether it works for both the languages, okay? So we'll uh, start off with the French language. So let's run this. So as you can see, it clicked on the camera's link and then it came to this particular page. So both the title and the link worked uh, in French language, even if we had written two different uh, text there, right? But there was the regex which helped us to identify this control in this particular language. Now let's change back to English and let's see if this still works, okay? So I'm going to the home page, and now I'm going to run this again, okay? So let's go ahead and run this in Scratchbook again. And this time as well, it should click on the camera's link. Okay, so it, it clicked on the camera's link. And this is how you can extend your automation testing for multiple languages which are supported by your web application. So this is known as the multilingual testing and it is supported by most of the test automation tools and the same can be done uh, in Tosca as well. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.